Hey riders, Eric Lang with Ride Adventures here and a bit of a different video today. Something scary happened to me years ago. I wanna show you the helmet camera footage that I did collect to verify the moment. And uh, just hope to talk through with you what's going on and what I'm thinking when I'm riding. And maybe it's gonna help you prepare for the obvious dangers that we can potentially come across when we ride motorcycles and explore. So let's go to the studio and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The situation I'm referring to here goes all the way back to 2010. I was down in Peru. I was out scouting new routes for our tours and rentals and things like that. And I had gone westbound into the Colca Canyon the day before with no problems whatsoever. The next morning, heading eastbound into the sun had a little problem. As you can see, pretty close call. You might not have seen exactly what happened there, but we'll show you coming up. And so there's really three relevant points I think all riders need to keep in mind that tie into this situation. The first is that the standing position is not necessarily always a safe position to be in. Also, sunlight, whether you're going into it or whether it's coming from behind you, can be a very dangerous factor. And the third is that the gyrational forces involved with riding your motorcycle are something that you might have to wrestle to the ground in situations like this. So let's go back to the video and show you what I'm talking about. So again, back to the footage here, I'm leaving the Colca Canyon the next morning, going into the rising sun, minding my own business, 45 miles an hour, enjoying some fresh air, when all of a sudden that second point I mentioned before comes into play, and that's that the sunlight that I was heading into was gonna obscure my vision and not quite allow me to figure out what these people on the side of the road were trying to indicate to me. I wasn't sure if they were just nice people waving and saying hello as they were or what was going on. But that point about going into the sun, perhaps a bit obvious, right? The camera doesn't quite show you really how blinding that is, but early day sunlight, end of the day, really a factor to consider whether you're going into the sun or whether the sun is at your back going with you. So think about that too. I've seen it before where a rider is going with the sun and we have a beautiful, clear uh, picture ahead of us. Remember that the vehicles and the drivers coming in your direction the opposite way, they are now blinded by the very same sun that is helping you look forward with such beautiful clear vision. So in both directions, the sunlight, especially early morning, end of day like this, it's an extra reason to slow down a little bit more and make sure that you're seeing clearly what's ahead of you and what could, what could be happening. So couldn't quite make out what these people were trying to indicate. And I also couldn't quite make out the very important factor that they were trying to point out to me, which was coming up ahead. And so I took a turn right back to center to look at what this was. And sure enough, there's a roughly 200 pound steel pipe or a barricade that had been lowered that wasn't lowered in the park when I entered the day before. And this is where being in the standing position comes into play. It's not always great. Yes, there are reasons to stand. We've talked about this in our other videos. We'll put a link in the description so you can see detailed explanations about reasons why you should and shouldn't stand while riding the motorcycle. And so I come back to center and now as I realize this 200 pound steel pipe is there, I've got to hit the brakes. But in order to do that, in order to slam on the brakes, I need to get myself back into the seated position. Really for two reasons. First is that in the standing position, you don't have quite the articulate uh, perfection that you do with your hands and your feet as far as applying the brakes in the right amount of pressure that you want to. But also, if you were to completely slam on the brakes, let's say this bike did have ABS, if you were to completely slam on the brakes and rely on ABS, that kind of pressure with your standing body moving forward, it's probably gonna be hard to keep yourself from going over the handlebars. So getting myself that half a second to go from standing to seated, you can see that all of a sudden the windshield appears on the bike there as it wasn't in my helmet camera frame before. You can see that I needed that half second to sit down. So now that I'm in the seated position, it's that thing I've never had to do before. Perhaps I had visualized it and you've always heard about people saying they had to lay a bike down. Now in this case, I guess I could have had the reaction to do the Superman jump. Ah, actually rewind. I can't jump when I'm in the standing position because you have to sit before you can jump off the bike, right? So because I was already in that seated position, just somehow instinct took over me that it was time to 
wrestle the bike down to the ground. And that's an important point to consider. Is that a motorcycle with all those moving parts and the heavy wheels and spokes and metal and rubber and everything like that turning creates a gyrational effect that really wants to keep your bike upright. You've got the engine and the crankshaft all moving, wanting to keep you in a vertical position such that, and I don't recommend doing it, but if you were to take your hands off the handlebars on most motorcycles, if everything's balanced and in good condition, the bike would essentially stay upright and would not fall over for uh, quite a while or until you put intentional weight and deliberate effort to one side to lay it down. But that's what I did here. You can see the right hand thrusts forward in an instant, turning the bars to the left, and then quickly back a little shimmy wiggle to the right, throwing my bike's weight over to one side like that so I could quickly get down and slide on the gravel underneath the pole like that and avoid obviously what could have been a roughly waist high collision with uh, that pipe, something I sure didn't want to do. So again, this one turned out pretty well. That instinct, I hope, lies within you. I hope that if you are ever in a situation like this, that you have the perhaps the wherewithal to say that no matter what, I am going to keep my body from making contact with whatever that dangerous object is ahead. Every situation is going to be different. No one's ever going to come into exactly this again, but maybe visualizing and walking yourself through this and thinking about what it takes to put a bike down in such an urgent situation, maybe that will help you out. And then keeping in mind the two other points mentioned that being in the standing position has its downsides as well sometimes too. And the sunlight is always a factor, whether it's uh, before you or coming from behind. But this is just information, again, wanted to share with you, hoping that it keeps you safe, allows you to ride more, enjoy more miles and more smiles. And let us know if you have questions or if you've had a similar situation in the comments section below the video. Have you been in something like this or similar? Or have you actually had to do the Superman move to evade, uh, avoid a situation like this? We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notifications button. And we'll see you in the next video. So, right on.